What's good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Travel with T. I'm T, your host. And today, we're going to be getting into Ubud. Pardon this. If that's a little loud, I'm sorry. I'm going to try to edit it out. So, if you've been tapping in so far, I have tapped into Bali Cinnamon as well as Bali Uluwatu. This is the third part of the Bali series where we're doing Ubud, honey. Okay, Ubud is a hot spot destination for travelers who want to come to Bali. I'm telling you, this is it. I mean... It's giving, isn't it? So, so on this episode, we're going to tap into my accommodations. We're going to tap into the touristy spots like the swing, the rice fields, the waterfalls, of course, local eateries, of course, some really top-notch restaurants, as well as some day clubs, okay? Because I've been tucked away in cinnamon for the past four days, and I'm ready to turn it up. I know Obud has all of those vibes. So, yeah, the itinerary is going to be down below in the deep, and I hope you find this video informative. And if you like what you've seen so far in the other Bali episodes and you're not subscribed, I don't know what you're doing, make sure you give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for some more original tea content, and let's get into Ubu, shall we? Deck! <laughs> We did it! We got the iPhone! Woo! We got an iPhone! All right. Y'all, wow, Jesus. What an American, hey? Incredible, just like that, we fixed it. Hours later, we came, we found the location. Got a new iPhone, and now we're headed to the waterfalls, thanks to Kadek. Oh, we're going to the water temple first. Um, and then we'll do the waterfall after. There's a will, there's a way! Woo, woo, woo. We're back just like that. You can never keep a player down for too long. I was really worried for a moment. If you came back from the cinnamon episode, you know my phone got fried the last night there, which is extremely weird. I think there was some kind of weird energy going on, but we're not claiming it and we're not really getting into it. So I drove a few hours away. My driver took me to go cop a new iPhone, which I'm grateful for because I wouldn't have been able to get this content or any content because my camera also got fried. All right, y'all, so we've had a little bit of a morning. Today is going to be the first episode of the, or the concluding of Cinnamon's episode and heading into Ubud. Um, and it's been a morning. I got a new iPhone. <laughs> I'm praying that the other stuff on the other phone is recoverable, which I think it is. And yeah, let's do it. All right, y'all, so this is, we are at the what? Where are we going? <laughs> we're at the water palace. No, water temple. We're at, we're at the water temple to get cleansed, yeah. so to get tita, saved. Tita Umpul. Tita Umpul. Umpul. Yes. Super excited. All right, y'all, let's get into the vlog. So we're at Titra Ampul, which is a water palace. I stopped by here um, on the way from Cinnamon to Ubud. My driver, Kadek, was freaking amazing. I believe I booked this package through Salmon Valle, which was the resort I stayed at in Cinnamon. Mm. Better than American banana. Yeah. Sure. Sweeter. Sweet, isn't it? Yeah. All right, so let's get into the vlog. So Turta Ampua is pretty much like a holy water temple. You know, when I went to Cinnamon, I stopped at the Turta Ganga, um, which was more of like a water palace. Here is a place where you can actually get cleansed. People come from all over the world um, to experience uh, these natural spring waters that the um, that the grounds are built around. Um, and it is definitely like a sacred place where people come to pray and get 
purified um, and the rituals are known as Melukat. But uh, 111 is definitely my angel number. So, you know, the universe does not play about me. I was definitely supposed to be here. Each of these fountains hold um, different um, cleansings by different gods. Um, apparently, there's lots of people here. I did go to another purification place later in the vlog, which I loved um, a lot more than this place. I definitely recommend the other one. But this one is also a really hot tourist spot. This park is actually really huge as well. Um, if you guys want to like spend a day here, you totally can do that. Okay, but let's get into the healing pools. There are two healing pools. This is the second one. As you can see, there's not as many people um, coming to this one. Although Kadek told me this is the fountain that I um, should go to. There's fountains for spiritual cleansing, blessings and protection. Um, there's also fountains for, um, you know, just general prayer, blessings, purification. So you pretty much say your intention and, you know, do your thing you get cleansed when i tell you people are coming all over this here is one of the priests that uh Kadek mentioned and this is where people come to meditate and pray and just get grounded and tap in um definitely something i wasn't expecting i uh, love that the sarongs also uh, are you know with the trees as well like the trees were sarongs um, this is, like I said, a tourist uh, destination. So there's obviously places to get souvenirs, get some grub, some local eats are near, but Kadek took me to one of his favorite local war rooms. We're having street food today. Yeah. He's shy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we stopped at the side of the road. We're at a war room, right? So yeah, we are in, we just in Bangli. Yeah. 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 We were having some Nazi Kampur. Nazi Kampur time. I can't wait to the day that I'm just paid to travel and eat all over the world at local places and just live my freaking life. Uh, traveling and going to see markets is one of my favorite things to do. Like their snacks are so different. Everything's so different. The drinks, just like the culture. I absolutely love it. I did get to try Nasi Kampur when I was staying at Salman Vaya, but it was a lot more bougie. So this is the real deal right here. I'm in a war room and I'm eating some street food. Nasi Kampur. Yeah, I'm eating some street food. Okay, so nasi kampur is pretty much like translating to mixed rice. It's like a traditional Indonesian dish, um, super popular like street food that comes with a variety of like mixed sides, veggies, lots of vegans um, here in Bali. So, you know, tempeh, tofu, but there is, you know, meat options like pork came with mi goreng, which is pretty much like a noodle dish. Um, typically comes with like a skewer of some sort, like a saute, um, which is interesting. You know, everyone knows uh, chicken saute from, you know, like Thai food. But yeah, saute usually comes with some type of vegetable, some egg, sometimes fish. Um, a soup also is something that like is there as well as like condiments, like some ball and all of the amazing things. Um, and like I said in the last couple of videos I had, um, I really like Balinese food because it's kind of like a mixture like I'm literally salivating right now. A mixture of a bunch of different things, kind of choose your own adventure. Um, I've always loved soup, but I didn't really realize like until like watching and editing these things, I'm like, yo, soup is the best. And Bali, Bali people don't play about their soup. By the way, this sausage I had was so freaking fire. It, um, it's called uh, urutan and it's like a dry fermented pork sausage made with obviously pork fat, um on the insides of a pork it is so freaking good obviously this the food is so spicy um had to drink lots of water but definitely absolutely delicious uh completely different than my first intro to nasi kampur when i was at uh salmon vaya but this right here definitely a 10 out of 10 clapped it easily banger and you know i had to cop some snacks from the shop Okay, so that was a delicious stop before heading over to the next adventure. This was 
an hour away from Ubud, this waterfall we stopped by. Uh, this place also has a restaurant here as well if you want to do like two birds in one stone kind of vibe. But get into this energy and listen to these chicotas like vibes. Like, are you kidding me? Okay, so you also have to understand, like, coming from Uluwatu, very beachy, cinnamon, very, like, open, not really in the jungle. And now I'm, like, headed into Ubud. So very jungle-esque, very green. Now I'm, like, in the thick of it. Absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. Um, lots of steps, by the way. Kadek is so funny. He's like, all right, let me record you looking at the waterfall. I'm, like, looking at it. I'm like, okay, cool. I wasn't, like in shock and awe he completely played me he was like girl this is not the waterfall we still got a, like a little bit of a, a trek to go um it probably took us i want to say if you're really moving like 10 minutes uh to get to the real waterfall this is my first time ever really being in like a jungle like this uh so i'm just like taking it all in absolutely gorgeous vibes i love green i needed it it is the color of the heart chakra so definitely tapped into it and just like being grounded um feet in the dirt type of grounding like i i remember what it felt like just walking here anyways kadek also um had a drone so i was like yeah let's do it it's so funny because i was like i want to do like a vintage feel i wish he shot it in 4k now that i'm like editing it but all good listen to this such peace like i don't think you understand how rejuvenating it really is to just be listening to the natural waterfall the natural pools are a vibe by the way there's two natural pools here um and then like you know just feeling the dirt under your feet um and listening to it so there's definitely an energy in this waterfall as well like a really calming peaceful beautiful energy apparently this place is super busy during the day this is kind of like going into the evening so fortunately there was only like a couple other people that were there um and even then they got there and then left like 10 minutes into us being here i spent maybe like an hour and some change here very dark caves around which is kind of giving a little spooky but absolutely beautiful you could see the top of the waterfall here um lots of like chanai and daily offerings um, come to this waterfall as well it being you know a living pretty much breathing uh entity if that makes any sense but 10 out of 10 recommend coming to this waterfall if anybody is in ubud like i said this is an hour away from ubud um so it might be a little bit of a drive but definitely a complete vibe worth it got some cute pics here as well and then just kind of dipped out and now finally after a full day of ripping and running grabbing my phone and doing the things we made it to Ubud. This is unreal. Where I am is unreal. Bali is not a real place. Like, I am so floored by it. Wow. What? This is incredible. I mean, this is a joke. This is not real, right? Look at my, look at my spot. I got a little hangout bed there. The waterfall down there. Kind of scary i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie So as you know, got in the night before, so I wasn't able to do like a full room tour, but woke up to this glory because I got here and it was pitch black. Look where I'm staying. This is uh, Zen Ubud, um, which is maybe about 
15, 20 minutes away from the Ubud Center. You know me. I like a good duck off, tucked away. Um, its own private pool, little breakfast nook outside, praying mantis, good omen, good vibes here for it. And the room, pretty standard, pretty straightforward, nothing out of the norm or extraordinary. I think really when people stay here, they are coming for the greenery. They're coming for this jungle vibe, straightforward room. And I think the main attraction of the room itself is going to be this outdoor tub. Like, if you know me, I'm a tub girly. I love a bath. Beautiful sunlight coming through the balcony. Plush green. There's also a river down below. I mean, like you're hearing the waterfall, you're hearing the river, you're hearing um, the water from the pool. It's just like really calming, tranquil, uh, serene, gorgeous energy. And you have access to the river from the hotel as well, which I definitely didn't tap into. Um, but now we're going to be headed to breakfast. My room is all the way at the bottom. So there are so many steps, by the way. Uh, this is the hotel breakfast was i i mean um the first two previous hotels i stayed at the food was pretty decent breakfast was okay here uh but you could order whatever you want for breakfast like you can order a million things which is kind of cool um like i said so many steps the room i stayed at was the one all the way at the bottom um and uh the the workers that stayed there pretty much said like it was their favorite room because it is the most private is the most ducked off secluded one um, and I absolutely loved it. Anyways, let's get into the first full day in Ubud. So for the first full day in Bali, I'm going to the Bali swing, obviously. I'm going to be doing a waterfall. And I'm also going to be getting into the monkey forest. Period. And my do Kreta, if I'm pronouncing that correct, tonight. Definitely, if not tonight, tomorrow. And let's get into day one. Ubud. All right, so boom, you know, I'm gonna do some touristy things. I reached out to a driving company and they're like, you gotta do the Bali swing. Saw a bunch of chilies at a chili farm on the way, which I thought was really cool. This is the Bali swing, infamous for taking photos and all the things. You can rent dresses here, but you know, I never have to do that. You know, I put it on. Anyways, this dress I wore was so freaking cute. That's my driver behind me, his name's Bawa super fun good energy um but like i said this is where people come take photos for the gram lots of different photo ops like over 20 photo ops um got some cool things it's so interesting how like balinese people want to record you on the phone like they're doing all these like flipping and weird things oh my gosh anyways so <laughs> got some photos love swinging on this swing i felt like such a big kid and y'all know that uh that audio was like she was a fairy <laughs> that's really how I felt on the inside um but swinging like as a child was one of my favorite things to do at the park so I was really like I want a big swing when I get my crib whenever I become a homeowner I want a humongous swing um I'm gonna post the photos from here uh on my IG hopefully pretty soon but I spent hours here it did take really long there's massive lines okay I just want to let that be known Y'all, I'm just leaving the Bali swing place. That took so much longer than expected. Gonna head to the waterfall now. I would definitely, oh, look at that lizard. So what I meant to say is I would come earlier and maybe bring your own photographer. Um, because when you get the photographer from there, it takes a long time to get the photos. So maybe, I don't know, but it was still good vibes. What's the name of the place we're going now? Uh, Bonkasa. Bonkasa. All right, y'all. So we're in Bonkasa Village and just got to Taman Veggie Waterfall. This place is absolutely magical and breathtaking. Um, so interesting. Remember I was talking about how like the camera thing, man, my driver kept doing that and it almost really upset me. I was like, why do you keep doing this? Just take a normal video. <laughs> Anyways, um, Got to Taman Veggie Waterfall and I'm thinking that I'm going to go to like a waterfall that I had went to previously with Kadek on the way to Ubud, but I was in for a very spiritually aligned treat. So you can do all kinds of different um, things here. You can do tarot reading, you can do um, 
this water purification in the waterfall here. Um, and in order to do that, you need to have your peace offering to get in there. Um, and that is in the form of Chanong Sari, which is a daily offering that is made in Hindu culture. Um, and it is an assortment of different flowers and each flower is, um, you know, representing one of the gods, uh, being air, water, fire, earth, wood, um, and other elements as well. And then you, you know, offer with your daily offering something, maybe like a cracker, a piece of candy, nuts, or like something that you like. She also mentioned people often sometimes put like cigarettes because, you know, it has to be like something you enjoy and like you want to, you know, like give up and kind of like express your gratitude, which is, you know, this happens, I think, I want to say two times a day, once in the morning and then once in the evening, but here, uh, I think multiple times a day. And in order to, you know, go through the water purification, I do need to make an offering, um, to the gods for my cleansing. So I got a chance to make a bunch of Chanong Sari and learn more about it, which is absolutely beautiful to me. Um, I actually did, uh, opt out to do tarot reading, not really a tarot reading, but a palm reading. And I was skeptical about it. I was like, man, I don't really care to get my palm read. Um, but man, this lady read me like a book. When I tell you I left here and I was like, how, what, who? Um, that was like the start to like this like whole cleansing that I'm about to get into. Birds are like really a deep spiritual um, animal for me. And to see the owls, it was kind of like confirming that I was really about to go through something really heavy. Uh, had <laughs> a little bit of something to drink before heading down and... Then my shaman, who pretty much uh, came with me to do my cleansing, was like, "Listen, you're gonna you're gonna do all the gods. We're gonna give you the whole basket of chenong." And I'm like, "Okay." I'm thinking I'm just gonna go with the one that I made with my offering. But um, when you go in here, pretty much there are different gods, all representing something else. Um, okay, so I'll touch back on that later. But I didn't mention when I first got here and I was building the chenong. All I was hearing was screaming hysterically and laughs at the top of people's lungs. Listen to this faint laugh in the background for a sec. Okay, so as you can imagine, if somebody's like pulling up to see a waterfall and has no idea what real work is happening here you're like why are people laughing why are people screaming so to break this whole um situation down to you really quickly um as i mentioned there are different gods uh for example um each one has a, a diff each one is a deity and it has a different energy we have like the creator this right here is mama bali um the destroyer the transformer the goddess of rice and fertility um the preserver um a lot of mythical creatures, good and bad. And this here is the main waterfall. I immediately felt a inkling to this living energy. Um, this is the main waterfall where people go through the cleansing. This is where we end. So we're pretty much walking in like a full on path in a circle. Um, we'll get to some caves. Uh, but as you can imagine, like, Coming here for me, you know, I wasn't expecting to get into this, but I think that I'm a very spiritual person. I'm very tapped in. So I think that like when you're called to do something like no matter what it is, the universe is going to put you there. You know what I mean? I came to Bali for my birthday. I did need a real break and to like duck off. But really what I needed to was to like unpack some heavy, heavy stuff. I don't know why I'm sharing this with y'all. I feel like as I grow and evolve, I'm OK being vulnerable, which is amazing. And I love being able to share my experience. So Anyways, this is like some caves, right? So we go through these caves. First of all, it's pitch black. I'm over here like, uh-uh, I'm not about to walk through this cave by myself. I really felt like these caves were alive. I felt energy living inside of them. And go through the cave. This here is where I do, um, you know, a really deep kind of my first real cleansing with the spouts of water that are naturally coming from the waterfall here. Um, I believe some of these um, gods, I gave them like three chanongs 
and some of them two chinongs. Um, the ones previous to this, I was giving them one. As you can see, there's a spout of water here. Um, I also didn't mention an incense has to go with the chinong sari offering. Um, you say a prayer, you do your thing. Um, and then this is where, you know, the rituals start to happen after you drop off all your chinong. Uh, there's a pattern that happens. It's a three, it's a seven, and it's a three. So it's like you drink three times, you wash three times, you wash your face three times, you wash your head. Like, it's like a pattern, you know what I mean? So heavy numbers, heavy things going on. I don't know if you guys really care to dive too deep into it, but I like to mention if you're really coming to like get purified, which a lot of people come to Bali for, I think the first place that I went to was cool. But like this here is something way like out of this world like different dimension energy energy um so here is the waterfall where like i'm concluding um my moment and you know you do the screaming you scream very loud three times um and then you go laugh you know three times and this whole ritual is a very sacred ritual in the hindu culture like this is like some real like it's like real magic type stuff. Um, so am I blessed and grateful to have experienced this? Absolutely. Was I expecting it? Absolutely not. And then these priests here, they bless you with the green coconut and then the yellow coconut. Um, pretty much you're like baptizing yourself. So, I mean, in Catholic culture, Christians, you get baptized. This is something like it, but imagine doing this every day. Um, and then you do the mark on your forehead and then you're out. When I tell you, <laughs> y'all, that experience was life-changing. It was one of the best experiences I've ever, ever experienced. Definitely recommend it for somebody who wants to try something different, anybody who's looking for a cleansing, or just wants to learn a little bit more about um, Hindu culture, but on to the next vibe. She's spiritually tapped in, Ellen aligned. She's a baddie, we love her. She does all the things. <laughs> She also likes to go out for drinks and party and eat good food. So that's what we're going to do next. Um, going to Kratia. I think I'm pronouncing that properly. If not, oops. Um, it is a day club, day jungle club. But I'm here for a good time, not a long time. And it's like 730. So I'm going to go check it out now. I heard there's a really cool DJ over there. So let's get into that. Okay, so we just pulled up and the reception told me that it's so, so much more of a vibe in the daytime, but I'm starving, so I'm gonna eat here anyways. An attempt to come here tomorrow during the daytime to catch the views and the energy because that's what he's saying. He's saying tomorrow during the day, it's a vibe. But we're gonna check it out now because we're here. Oh, snap! Woo! Where's the restaurant? Is it a vibe in there or no? So that was absolutely freaking hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. They're like, it's dead. You don't want to go in there and come party with us. I'm like, I have to eat food. They're like, eat alcohol at our villa. I'm like, y'all, they said it died two hours ago, but whatever, I'm hungry. Absolutely hilarious. All right, we are at Crate Yet. This is the day jungle club. When I tell you I got here and I was like, dang, I wish I could have came in the daytime. Like. It, this obviously is never gonna do anything justice. The food was okay. I had some prawns, some potatoes, and some broccoli. Pretty delicious, pretty tasty. I mean, very well seasoned. Like, it was definitely giving good food. Um, but, you know, obviously, this place, you know, people come here to party. There's um, cabanas, it's a vibe. It's like a freaking beach club, you know, but in the jungle. Like, what? I'm so mad I missed it. When I come back to Ubud, definitely gotta pull up. <laughs> All right, y'all. So, good vibes here for sure. I definitely have to come back tomorrow. Um, but, Yuari, my waitress, told me that for nightlife, because we're in Ubud, there's not that much happening here other than this during the day. 
But she mentioned that CP Lounge is where it's popping to 10, apparently. I don't know what popping to is. I'm from LA, so everything in LA is popping to But we're gonna go see what the vibes are. Easily did not come back there the next day. <laughs> ah! Okay, anyways, this is the center of Ubud. It is popping over here. I was like, wait a minute, because you know, I'm ducked off in the jungle. So I have no idea about all these bars, these restaurants, these clubs, like it's popping over here. Like if anybody, this is more of like your vibe, like I would definitely stay in the center of Ubud. If you want to be close to the stuff, this is CP Lounge. Met some friends here, partied with them. There is two parts of CP Lounge, okay? This is the video that I showed y'all, but like there's a duck off, like a very lit party room that I did not record. Uh, this is the blue door um nice bar area this is like the back where there's a little club like a little not really a secret club but it's like a tucked away club uh the music was great i finally was like oh my god i'm listening to hip-hop like this is lit so definitely turned up all night had a great time <laughs> it's so funny like i go from being a super spiritual to like turning up i am hilarious got a burger at like 5 a.m if anyone wants to find somewhere to eat this is the place to go. Next morning, let's get into day nine, shall we? She had a time last night, the extreme spirituality to the extreme party is completely so Gemini. Like two polar opposites did they thing yesterday. Why did they thank to the fullest extreme? Woo cha. But it's my last full day in the boot. So, although I wanted to lay in bed all day, we're doing an excursion. So let's get into it. Just know people are turning TF up in Ubud. Okay, Bawa scoops me up this morning. And I'm so hungry. He's like, we have to go to Tepasari. He's like, you have to go here. Their food is amazing. So it's a restaurant and bar. Uh, delicious, delicious food, by the way. Um, some like plant chips with some ball. Loved it. I got the crispy duck. It was bussin'. This place is freaking amazing. Okay, so all right so if you watched my first episode in uluwatu i ordered crispy duck at eagle warroom but this duck was incredible like there was actually flesh on the duck like it wasn't just super crunchy and like no meat it was perfectly cooked like the vegetables were perfectly seasoned the rice honestly I'm telling you, I absolutely love this soup as well. I really enjoyed, like, with the sambals, they had pickled snakeskin fruit. And you knew I fell in love with snakeskin fruit when I was in Cinnamon. And they had it pickled there. And I was like, this is so freaking bomb. Like, this by far was one of my favorite meals. I know I say that every time I eat, but, like, y'all, it was freaking giving. Like, the vegetables, the rice, the duck. The duck was cooked to perfection it was crunchy but like it was juicy and i mean this it was spicy but not over spicy and then i had the pickled sweetness to kind of cut all that stuff out with the acidity bruh bussin and then this soup these like banana blossom heart soup is so good and you can't beat the view definitely recommend pulling up this is the chef by the way he murked it like this place is huge so it was hella busy definitely crushed it for sure 10 out of 10 All right, so after eating some lunch, headed to the Rice Terrace. This place is so exciting for me. I really just love seeing like cultivation. Like rice is such a universal ingredient. And to see like how it's really made. I mean, we have lots of rice terraces in the Philippines as well, but this was really cool. Also, by the way, they have swings, photo ops, zip lining, um, all kind of cool things to do. And I think that's kind of... Um, necessary like I feel like if somebody wants to knock things out in one place this place might be it for you um, you know just to maximize time 
Uh, but this right here is sticky rice. Um, there's also brown rice. Uh, they also grow black rice here as well as jasmine rice. Um, this rice right here is three and a half months old. Um, they have lots of crops here as well. This rice is four and a half months old. That is uh, white rice. Super freaking cool. I mean, like, look at that. <laughs> Somebody was ziplining. I don't think I could get into it, but uh, if it's your cup of tea, definitely pull up. So I got to like explore the rice fields a little bit. Uh, got some fresh fruit um, and definitely bought some rice to take home with me as well as eat a mango. You know, mangoes are my favorite fruit. I'm gonna make some pudding with this when I get back to LA. We're cutting up some mangoes now. Mango time. Thank you. Mmm. Mmm. Is it sweet, right? Delicious. We got the original to go bag here. <laughs> for my mangoes so cool okay so let's get into the rice fields a little bit more so it is like beyond just you know place to grow rice it is how to tie in the land the community spirituality all into one like i said you know the balinese are very spiritual so the rice has to do with like you know fertility and um not only is it like a place for tourists and it's great for community and culture but there's also real like spiritual religious significance in these rice fields um and the water management system like the irrigation is something that like they're known for like it's renowned um and a great way to sustain the lifestyle um through the rice fields which i think is super freaking dope you know we don't really think about things like that uh but then we headed over to the uh, Luet coffee plantation this spiky looking tree is the tree that bears the snakeskin fruit and i was so excited to see that there's also mangosteen um cocoa plants this is the Luet animal uh trigger warning i don't know a lot of people don't like to see caged animals me being one of them um so these luwaks they eat these coffee beans right and then obviously they go to the bathroom and Balinese, they take these poops and they clean them and they make coffee with them. And I'm going to drink it at some point. But uh, they also harvest vanilla, peppercorn, ginger, lemongrass, turmeric, ginseng, um, amongst other amazing ingredients here, cloves. Uh, and they also, you know, sell them. They also infuse their coffees and teas with them. Uh, so it's kind of like a real ground to um consumer type of situation that goes on over here uh these are cocoa beans if nobody's ever seen them irl that's how you make chocolate uh these are ground not ground coffee but this is arabic and um i don't what's the other coffee i don't know but they're mixed up um and then this right here is what the luak poops out and then they clean it they say they disinfect it and then they make coffee with it yes i know very much interesting I do drink it too, by the way. <laughs> and then I get into toasting some coffee. Like, obviously, being hands on is fun for me. So I was like, let me get over there and toast some coffee with my homegirl. She actually really enjoyed me. I enjoyed her too. Uh, I learned that they use coffee wood to actually toast the coffee. This takes about 45 minutes. Um, and then this is how they ground the coffee. They don't have machines. They are using a freaking mortar and pestle, a giant mortar and pestle. She's like, you want to do this? I'm like, yeah. How long it take? She says an hour. I'm sad. I'm a girl. I'm good. That was fun. That was cute. Got my video. Got my photo. <laughs> and now we're moving on. So, um, like I said, uh, this is look at this setup. By the way, super crazy. This is uh, the Luwak animal. As you can see up there, they actually really praise the Luwak animal. So this is like a deep thing uh that they have they celebrate it there's a koi pond here this place is kind of cute definitely pull up so they have tea and coffee tasting which is free by the way um and then the bali cat puccino <laughs> the poop chino is maybe like yeah you have to pay for that one um but i'm about to dive into like a full tea test and a full coffee test and break it down to y'all uh because i'm sure you guys want to know the tea <laughs> literally all right this is 
rosella. Mm. Rosella is sweet tea. Yeah. Ginger tea. This is, this is coffee. I love ginger tea. Mm. It's delicious. Rice tea. Mmm. It has uh, toasted rice in them. Toasted, roasted rice. I love this. Lemongrass tea. Standard, straightforward. Bali coffee. Wow, that's really strong. I'm good on that one. Don't love. It's good, but I don't love it. Affogato. Mango steam keeps the girls snatched. Mmm. Wow. This is bomb. Get up it. It's bomb. Saffron tea. This is saffron tea. I don't really get saffron. It's not really giving that. Hot cocoa. <laughs> it's actually not the hot chocolate that I'm used to. A little bitter. Maybe the one that I'm using usually has like milk. It's a little bit more chocolatey. It's good though. Hot chocolate. Vanilla coffee. Vanilla. Mm. That's good. Mochaccino. That's bomb. Coconut. Oh, that's bomb. Coconut <laughs> coffee. What's your favorite? Avocado. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Avocado. Why did I think affogato? <laughs> this is good. Avocado coffee. How does that even make sense? Huh? They use the nut of the avocado? Yeah. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. It's crazy. But there's no caffeine in it. I thought they mix it with coffee as well. Oh, they mix it with real coffee. I'm like, how is that? <laughs> Oh god, it's disgusting! Yeah. Ginseng coffee. Ginseng. Mm. Alright, so we're gonna do a rating of the teas. Out of all the teas, my favorite one has to be the red rice tea. Then we're gonna get. I can't pick lemongrass and ginger, that's a given. So we're not even gonna go there. Because, like, ginger tea is the best. Ginger tea is so good. But I think red rice and the mango steam. Bomb, 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 bomb. I love this red rice tea. So good. I love this one. For the coffee, coconut is so good. Avocado is really good. Avocado. Yeah, coconut avocado are the best. Hello, how are you? Oh snap, y'all, the poop coffee's here. The poop coffee has arrived. A poop chino. A puccino. Cat puccino. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This right here, we'll see. We're gonna give it a smell. It smells so strong. Dark black. It literally looks black. Like it's black. This is the Luwak coffee, the infamous Balinese Luwak coffee. All right, let's do it. Absolutely. 
absolutely not. <laughs> the grounds are in there. Yes, I did go. Absolutely not. 55,000 rupiah. Yeah. Oh, the, the, the grounds are in here still. Yours too? Yeah. Also, you don't filter it. So there's literal pieces of poop in here. You don't filter it? Why? <laughs> Two hairs. Booty hairs. <laughs> Booty hairs. Okay, wait. Wait a minute. So you're supposed are you you supposed to eat this? Oh skin scrub. Oh maybe I can save it then. I do do coffee scrubs. I really liked avocado. Coconut's obviously my favorite. I can't like just pick the coconut one, but the avocado one's good. Anything coconut's the best. But avocado, what do you guys think? Avocado or coconut was better? Avocado was fire. Yeah. It was like fatty. It was yeah. like creamy. Like the avocado one is creamy and luscious. The avocado coffee is made from the skin. No, the, what did you Oh, the actual green fruit. Yeah. Really? They dry it out so much of the coffee. Okay. Are you drinking the poop tea? I think to the end of it, yeah. See so what it tastes like in the poop. <laughs> don't feel like a bean at all. I feel like it's a bit off. You want it to taste poop? It tastes like poop. <laughs> he said he wants to taste poop. It does. It feels, it feels She's like, like, it tastes like a shh. I don't like it. <laughs> it's nasty. <laughs> she says it does taste like food. Disgusting. Alright. No. It's cold. Disgusting. Nasty. No harm or mean things towards the culture who loves this coffee. It's just not my cup of coffee or cup of tea. I do respect the art form and the craft. This is just not something that I would order again. I will most likely be taking home the, the actual browns that are in there. And maybe I'll take some avocado and coconut coffee home too. Honestly, this is such a tourist destination. People come to Bali to try this like poop coffee. Like what? Anyways, you can buy coffee. You can buy the spices and all the things that they have here. Like so super fresh stuff too, by the way. Like I brought some home and it's so good. There goes the Luwax. Like they don't play about their Luwax in Bali. Anyways, the night is young. We're about to get into some stuff. Teacup gang, what does it do? Okay, so rice. Ter okay, so the rice terraces and the coffee plantation were such a vibe today. Definitely recommend going. Uh, your girl is starving, so obviously dinner plans are ahead. I uh, was torn between three restaurants. Um, Donna, Copper, and Gale Club. Um, I'm going to go to Copper. They have like a rooftop vibe. Um, dinner as well as some Indonesian food, which is ultimately why I chose that spot. Um, as well as like some... Southeast Asian fusion vibes, and that's right up my alley. So definitely gonna pull up there. So let's get into some tasty things. Okay, I'm gonna make this restaurant review very quick. So I wanted to come here because it was like, you know, gonna be a fine dining experience, which it was technically ish. Um, the food was very much okay though. It wasn't like I wasn't like blown away. I am kind of bummed about it. It was my last night in Ubud. I wanted to go to some fire dinner spot. I got this uh, salt and pepper squid. The texture was great. The crunch was great. But when you think of salt and pepper squid, like you need to see that black pepper. You need to see that salt. You know, the texture was fire. The sauce was good. Like that was probably my favorite thing that I ate. Um, and this was the pork, the main that I got. Did not love y'all. Like it wasn't good at all. It wasn't giving fresh. Um, so I skedaddled, I skated. You know, it was empty. Use your judgment if you want to pull up here. I would definitely recommend going somewhere else. I'm going to just say what I have to say. No disrespect. Um, I'm just sharing my experience. I honestly feel like it's day 11 or 12, but I don't even know if it's relevant at this point. 
Good morning, teacup gang. Okay, so this is the last full day. No, I don't even think it's a full day. So this is the last day in Ubud. Um, I'm gonna be headed to Musa Panita later today. Um, I do wanna do something before I leave um, Ubud. I wanna do like a acupuncture or some kind of like sound bath or whatever. But I'm gonna head to breakfast uh, shortly and swim in the pool. Um, enjoy my last few moments here at this beautiful, beautiful view. And then tap into Musa Panita. Okay, so as the video concludes, you know I had to get some breakfast. The smoothie bowl was fire, fresh watermelon juice, um, a little bit of nasi goreng, and an omelet, cause I'm freaking, I'm a hungry girl. Like I love to eat. Those little crunchy potato things were fire. Um, anyways, did a little swim, and you know, now that I'm like concluding this, obviously when I was there, I was like, you know what, I should have stayed more in Ubud. I should have hung out a little bit more in Ubud because the next leg of the trip is going to be in Nusa Panita, which is a freaking vibe, by the way, if you're like an island girl like me. Um, but Ubud is a magical place. I loved it here. I'm super grateful for my experience here in the jungle. Um, I just want to show you guys the view from like the pool. Like, look at the river. Such a freaking vibe. And also, by the way, some of the waterfalls and rivers are like the irrigation system from the rice terraces. Isn't that so dope? Anyways, vibes in Ubud were immaculate. I don't have any regrets for my trip in Bali other than I wish I stayed longer. All right, y'all. This is concluding the Ubud moment of my Bali series. I might go to a little holistic healing thing on the way to the port, but I'm kind of up in the air on that. Um, but I am going to be headed to Nusa Panita, so if you guys want to stay tapped in i'll see you there okay so i definitely did tap into a little bit of spiritual grounding before heading to noosa panita follow my driver i was like yo where do i go like i need i, I want to like tap in real quick and he took me to somebody like a family friend like this is like balinese style homes like this is how they live these are their actual houses this is where the people and the locals uh from Bali, like they go to these, you know, healers um, per se. This specific one was a very quick reading, little aura, energy field, cleansing, um, chakra reading, um, all the things. Pretty much affirmed what I already knew, but uh, I had to tap in a faux show. Much needed. Ubud, magical, 10 out of 10. And now we're on the way. I'm headed to Doc before but that will pretty much conclude the um, Ubud episode. I hope that this was informative for you and you enjoyed. If you did, comment down below. And um, if you ever use anything from my itineraries, um, make sure to tag me and use hashtag travel with tea. And I also want to mention that I am now partnering with Trova Trip to start doing group tours and packages to your favorite cities um, and places all over the world. I am going to put the link down below in the details um, where you can fill out a survey, picking like when you would want to travel, where you would want to travel, what you're interested in, if you're doing more leisure or if you're looking for adventure. Um, Bali's on there, the Philippines is on there, Italy's on there, Japan's on there. There's so many options that are on that and I would love to make this um, travel blog a real life experience not only for myself but for everybody who is interested in traveling some more and doing that with me as their host so the link for that is going to be down below in the deeps as well and if you enjoyed this video make sure to thumbs up and subscribe to my channel